All right, guys, so this video is going to get into the basics of alpine glaciers. Remember, we talked about alpine glaciers before break, and we said that alpine glaciers were glaciers that were exclusively in the mountains. We'll talk about continental glaciers a little bit later on. During this video, you should make sure you get some good notes on these things here. We'll get into some intro and basic stuff. But we're going to mainly focus on the erosional features of alpine glaciers. And we'll also get into what happens after the ice melts in a glacier. What do you see on the ground after all that ice melts in the glacier? We'll talk about what moraines are, get a quick introduction. Again, make sure you get really good notes here. We're going to cover those notes again in class. We'll look at a whole bunch of examples in class, a whole bunch of pictures. I don't have any fancy demos or anything to put into this video to incorporate like the last few. Uh, just because, well, you know, we're not in the mountains here. We're in flatland, so it's hard for me to pull all that stuff together. So let's go ahead and get into it. If you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, let's take a look at this glacial landscape here. All of this was formed by ice, everything you're taking a look at here. And something you need to keep in mind here is that these mountains didn't start out sharp and jagged like this. These mountains transformed into this kind of landscape over many thousands of years of weathering because of the glacier that covered this whole area. Now, the glaciers that you're looking at right now are much smaller than they used to be. How can I tell? Because I'm looking at this big, massive U-shaped valley right here. A glacier bulldozed its way down the side of the mountain and made this big, huge U-shaped valley. That's something that's very characteristic of glaciers, is as they move down the mountain in response to gravity and internal plastic flow, basal slip, the things we talked about in class, they bulldoze a huge U-shaped valley going down down the side of the mountain. There's another one here off to the left. And you can also tell a glacier came down here because of the big meltwater channel. So a glacier was here. The terminus is about right here right now, but it covered all of this at one time. And that's kind of what's difficult to imagine here is that this was once a rounded top mountain. And then a glacier came by and through erosional processes like ice wedging and abrasion, it knocked all that down and made these sharp jagged peaks. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and identify what some of the things in here are, define some vocab words, and we're going to come back to the picture and see if you can spot them out. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Get your notes ready. All right, so let's go ahead and get into some of this vocab. We're going to cover a few things here on this slide. First of all, I already defined it, the main glacier. This is the biggest part of the glacier right here. And then we have some tributary glaciers coming down here. So just like rivers, a tributary glacier is a smaller glacier that feeds into a larger glacier. If you didn't get that down from the previous slide, make sure you got it. Here's our big U-shaped valley, this big erosional valley that the uh, main glacier formed as it bulldozed its way down the mountain. And now we're going to also start with a few of the other words that are here, like this one right here, cirque, C-I-R-Q-U-E, cirque. And here's a cirque right up here, and there's another cirque here, and there's another cirque over here. And what cirques are, are bowl-shaped depressions that form because of ice wedging. So what you need to picture is that you had this rounded mountain, and there was a crack in the mountain, a glacier kind of wiggled its way into, or some water wiggled its way into that fracture there, got cold, froze, expand, got bigger, and then eventually this process is going to keep on happening where you get this massive piece of ice embedded into the side of the mountain. It's going to make the mountain a little bit less rounded. It's going to make it sharp. It's going to make it jagged. But what you're going to wind up with is this bowl-shaped depression in the side of the mountain right here. And that's what a cirque is. All right, next we have this word right here. It's called an arete. It's a French word, which is why it has the little carrot up there. At least I think it's French. Um, and an arete is this ridge right here. It's these ridges that separate these small tributary glacial valleys right here. All these little ridges that we have going on right here, these are arets. And these, again, are erosional ridges. And again, our mountain kind of started out like this at some point. Erosion took over and we wound up with these separated valleys, these separated glacial valleys divided by this high ridge right here. And that's what an arete is. It's in a ridge that's formed by erosion and it generally separates smaller glacial valleys. Now let's go ahead and take a look here. Here's an arete. 
here's another rat coming up and here's another rat coming up and where do they all join you get a horn and a horn is basically a pointed top to a mountain to a glacial mountain so here's an erect coming up here and here's an erect coming up here here's an erect coming up here so this is also a horn it's a pointed top to a glacial mountain now remember again it used to be like this but erosion took over mainly ice wedging and abrasion and we wound up with this pointed top mountain right here and that would be a horn all right cruising right along we got another one to take a look at here you see this triangular formation right here and there's another triangular formation right here and then we got another one kind of hanging out right here these are called truncated spurs the word truncate means to cut off and a spur is like a little thing that sticks out so we have this little thing that got cut off over here and over here and over here forming these triangular formations that's a truncated spur and all it really is is the cut off end of an aret because if we follow this ridge coming down here it meets and if we follow this ridge down here it meets it's different from a horn a horn is that sharp peak at the top of the mountain where a truncated spur is where an aret gets cut off now what cut it off the main glacier came by and bulldozed its way down and smacked off this part of the ridge there. So we wound up with this truncated spur. All right, so here's that picture we took a look at a minute ago. Why don't you go ahead and hit pause and see if you can find an arete, a cirque, a horn, a truncated spur, a, uh, a tributary glacier, the main glacier, the U-shaped valley. So go ahead and hit pause and come back in a few seconds after you identified everything. All right, welcome back. I know you cheated. You probably didn't hit pause. But here we go. Let's take a look. Right up here, there's a horn. And there's another horn right there. Got another horn right up here. And probably got another one hanging over here, but it's hard to tell. Also, taking a look over here, we have a cirque, that bowl-shaped depression. Here's another cirque. There's another cirque back up in here. There's another cirque up in here somewhere. There's another cirque up in here. We got another bowl-shaped depression over here. There's a cirque. And then if we take a look, we have an arete hanging out over here. There's more rets right here, right here, right here. Let's go ahead and jump over here. Here's our main U-shaped valley. Now, did anybody find a truncated spur? We got one hanging out right over here, right over there. There's a truncated spur. It's hard to see in this picture. I'll show you some more obvious ones in just a minute. Okay, so what happens after all the glaciers melt? What do you wind up with? How does the shape of the land get affected because of the glaciers that used to be there? First of all, just a little bit of review here. Here's our horn right over here. This is the top jagged peak where all those arets met. Here's an arete, an example of a ret. We can trace them all out over here. Any of these ridges that we're looking at all along here, these are all arets. We have cirques, those bowl-shaped depressions in the side of the mountains. We have our glacial trough, or our big U-shaped valley. That's where the glacier used to be. Now we have a couple of new things. Oh, here's our truncated spur right over here. And uh, let's see, I think we covered just about everything. Now we have a couple of new things. We have a tarn. We have a Potternoster Lake. And we have hanging valleys. Now instead of writing them all out on here, let's go ahead and mix it up a little bit and take a look at some pictures. Okay, so here's what a tarn is. Real simple. It's a small lake that fills into a cirque after the glacier melts. So if we take a look at this picture up here in the upper right, we have this lake hanging out up here. And this is the meltwater from a glacier that used to fill into this cirque. So a cirque is that bowl-shaped depression, and a tarn is what's left in after the glacier melts. So a tarn's a lake inside of a cirque. All right, so let's take a look at this picture of Yosemite here. There's a few things to take a look at. First of all, this whole valley used to be filled with a glacier. Here's our massive U-shaped valley here. This is the glacial trough. 
Remember, a whole glacier used to fill into this valley, but once the glacier melted, this is all left behind, and there's a ton of glacial remnants here. The one that I really want to focus in on is right here. Notice how there's another U-shaped valley right here, but it's perched above the main glacier valley that's called a hanging valley and all that is is a smaller glacial valley that's at a higher elevation than the main glacial valley or than the main glacial trough now what's important to keep in mind here is that this hanging valley used to be filled with a tributary glacier that fed into the main glacier in the main glacial trough let's go back and take a look at this picture and we can see that pretty clearly here. Here's that hanging valley again. This is where that tributary glacier used to be. Here's where the main glacier used to be into the glacial trough. So basically, this hanging valley is a perched or a valley that's hanging above the main valley or it's separated from the main valley of the old glacier, of the old glacier that used to fill this trough right here. And oftentimes, when you take a look at these hanging valleys, you'll see waterfalls that develop. Let's pop back to Yosemite. And here's that waterfall I was talking about here in Yosemite. It's Yosemite Falls. All the snow melt that develops in the mountains and melts in the spring kind of cascades down that hanging valley and pours onto the main glacial floor below. You can go there and check it out yourself, but you can't really get there too late or else all that snow melt is going to go ahead and disappear before you get there. So the best time to go see this waterfall would be sometime in the late spring, early summer. That's when it really gets raging. But after that, all that stuff just evaporates and the fall gets smaller. All right, just a couple more to go. We're almost done. All right, so here we have three tarns. There's a tarn right here, another one here, another one here. Usually tarns are pretty isolated, but when you have a chain of tarns like this, they call them Potter Noster Lakes. I know, really weird. I can tell you what they mean when we get into class, but Potter Noster Lakes. And all that is is a chain of tarns, usually connected by a small stream or something like that. All right, and finally, Finger Lakes. Finger Lakes are when the main glacial trough fills up with water. Usually a lot of snow melts and a lot of glacier melt fills that main glacial valley right up and it creates this massive lake, uh, massive lake that runs the entire length of the glacial valley. All right, so back to this picture. We now know what Potter Noster lakes are. We now know what a tarn is. We now know about glacial troughs and hanging valley. And of course, to review, we've already talked about cirques, horns, arets, and truncated spurs. Okay, so here's an alpine glacier. It's got a bunch of features that you should be familiar with now. Uh, but there's a new one that I want to call your attention to, and it's this stuff right here. It's these lines that are following the glacier, the ones that are in the middle and the ones that are on the sides and then meet up here in the middle again, this guy right over here. And what we have here is we have sediment. That's all unsorted sediment of eroded material that came from the mountain. Remember, glaciers are eroding machines. And all these stripes that we're looking at here within the glacier, this is all buildup of sediment that is piled up as that glacier has been moving downhill. There's only three types of moraines that we're going to get to know. So to help us get to know those, let's take a look at another diagram here. Three moraines that I'm going to expect you to know are called lateral moraines, medial moraines, and end moraines. Real simple, a lateral moraine is a moraine on the side of a glacier. And a medial moraine is a moraine in the middle of a glacier. And an end moraine is a moraine that's, well, at the end of a glacier. And usually it also marks the terminus of a glacier. So when you want to know how far a glacier went, you can find the end moraine that will show you the furthest extent of the glacier. So again, to review, we have lateral moraines on the side. We have medial moraines in the middle. And we have end moraines that mark the terminus of the glacier. All right, guys, in this video, we talked about some basics of alpine glaciers, talked about a bunch of those erosional features, and then what are those features that happen after the glacier melts. We just got a quick intro to what moraines are. We're going to look at a bunch of pictures of all these diagrams tomorrow. Uh, make sure you took really good notes. I'm going to check them for a stamp. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email.